The Gulf of Tonkin Incident, also known as the Usmadix Incident, is the name given to what were originally claimed to be two separate confrontations involving North Vietnam and the United States in the waters of the Gulf of Tonkin. The original American report blamed North Vietnam for both incidents but eventually became very controversial with widespread claims that either one or both incidents were false, and possibly purposefully so. On August 2, 1964, the destroyer US Maddox, while performing a signals intelligence patrol as part of DeSoto operations, reported being attacked by three North Vietnamese Navy torpedo boats of the 135th Torpedo Squadron. Maddox expended over 283-inch and 5-inch shells in what was claimed to be a sea battle. One U.S. aircraft was damaged, three North Vietnamese torpedo boats were allegedly damaged, and four North Vietnamese sailors were said to have been killed, with six more wounded. There were no U.S. casualties. It was originally claimed by the National Security Agency that a second Gulf of Tonkin incident occurred on August 4, 1964, as another sea battle, but instead evidence was found of Tonkin ghosts, and not actual North Vietnamese torpedo boats. In the 2003 documentary The Fog of War, the former Secretary of Defense Robert S. McNamara admitted that the August 2 Osmatic attack happened with no Defense Department response, but the August 4 Gulf of Tonkin attack never happened. The outcome of these two incidents was the passage by Congress of the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which granted President Lyndon B. Johnson the authority to assist any Southeast Asian country whose government was considered to be jeopardized by communist aggression. The resolution served as Johnson's legal justification for deploying U.S. conventional forces and the commencement of open warfare against North Vietnam. In 1995, former U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara met with former Vietnam People's Army General Vo Nguyen Giap to ask what happened on 4 August 1964 in the second Gulf of Tonkin incident. Absolutely nothing, GIAP replied. GIAP claimed that the attack had been imaginary. In 2005, an internal National Security Agency historical study was declassified. It concluded that Maddox had engaged the North Vietnamese Navy on August 2, but that there were no North Vietnamese naval vessels present during the incident of August 4. The report stated regarding the first incident on August 2 that, at 1500G, Captain Herrick ordered Ogier's gun crews to open fire if the boats approached within 10,000 yards. At about 1505G, the Maddox fired three rounds to warn off the communist boats. This initial action was never reported by the Johnson administration, which insisted that the Vietnamese boats fired first background. Although the United States attended the Geneva Conference, the Accords mandated, among other measures, a temporary ceasefire line, intended to separate Vietnamese and French forces, and elections to determine the future political fate of the Vietnamese within two years. It also forbade the political interference of other countries in the area, the creation of new governments without the stipulated elections, and foreign military presence. By 1961, President Godin Diem faced significant discontent among some quarters of the southern population, including some Buddhists who were opposed to the rule of Diem's Catholic supporters. After suppressing Vietnam political cadres who were legally campaigning between 1955 and 1959 for the promised elections, Diem faced a growing communist-led uprising that intensified by 1961, headed by the National Front for the Liberation of South Vietnam. The Gulf of Tonkin incident occurred during the first year of the Johnson administration. While Kennedy had originally supported the policy of sending military advisers to Diem, he had begun to alter his thinking due to what he perceived to be the ineptitude of the Saigon government and its inability and unwillingness to make needed reforms. 
Shortly before his assassination, in November 1963, Kennedy had begun a limited recall of U.S. forces. Johnson's views were likewise complex, but he had supported military escalation as a means of challenging what was perceived to be the Soviet Union's expansionist policies. The Cold War policy of containment was to be applied to prevent the fall of Southeast Asia to communism under the precepts of the domino theory. After Kennedy's assassination, Johnson ordered in more U.S. forces to support the Saigon government, beginning a protracted United States presence in Southeast Asia. A highly classified program of covert actions against North Vietnam known as Operation Plan 34 Alpha, in conjunction with the DeSoto operations, had begun under the Central Intelligence Agency in 1961. In 1964 the program was transferred to the U.S. Defense Department and conducted by the Military Assistance Command, Vietnam Studies and Observations Group for the maritime portion of the covert operation. Operation. Child class fast patrol boats had been purchased quietly from Norway and sent to South Vietnam, although the crews of the boats were South Vietnamese naval personnel. Approval for each mission conducted under the plan came directly from Admiral U.S. Grant Sharp, Jr., CINCPAC in Honolulu, who received his orders from the White House. After the coastal attacks began, Hanoi lodged a complaint with the International Control Commission, which had been established in 1954 to oversee the terms of the Geneva Accords, but the U.S. denied any involvement. Four years later, U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert S. McNamara admitted to Congress that the U.S. ships had in fact been cooperating in the South Vietnamese attacks against North Vietnam. Maddox, although aware of the operations, was not directly involved. What was generally not considered by U.S. politicians at the time were the other actions taken under Operations Plan 34 Alpha just prior to the incident. The night before the launching of the actions against North Vietnamese facilities on Hon Mien Thon Ngu Islands, the SOG had launched a covert long-term agent team into North Vietnam, which was promptly captured. That night two flights of CIA-sponsored Laotian fighter bombers attacked border outposts well within southwestern North Vietnam. The Hanoi government probably assumed that they were all a coordinated effort to escalate military actions against North Vietnam. The incident Daniel Ellsberg, who was on duty in the Pentagon the night of August 4, receiving messages from the ship, reported that the ship was on a secret electronic warfare support measures mission near northern Vietnamese territorial waters. On July 31, 1964, US Maddox had begun its intelligence collection mission in the Gulf of Tonkin. Captain George Stephen Morrison was in command of local American forces from his flagship Pus Bonhomme Richard. Maddox was under orders not to approach closer than eight miles from the north coast and four miles from Hon Air Nieu Island. When the SOG commando raid was being carried out against Hon Air Nieu, the ship was 120 miles away from the attacked area. First attack on the afternoon of August 2, Maddox radioed she was under attack from three North Vietnamese Navy P-4 torpedo boats, closing to within 10 nautical miles, while located 28 nautical miles away from the North Vietnamese coast in international waters. Maddox stated she had evaded a torpedo attack and opened fire with its 5-inch guns, forcing the torpedo boats away. Two of the torpedo boats had come as close as five nautical miles, released one torpedo each, but neither one was effective, coming no closer than about 100 yards after the Maddox evaded him. Another P-4 received a direct hit from a five-inch shell from Maddox, its torpedo malfunctioned at launch. Four U.S. NF-8 Crusader jets launched from the aircraft carrier Rust Ticonderoga and attacked the retiring P-4S. 
claiming one was sunk and one heavily damaged. Maddox suffered only minor damage from a single 14.5mm bullet from a P4 SKPV heavy machine gun into her superstructure. Retiring to South Vietnamese waters, Maddox was joined by the destroyer Us Turner Joy. The North Vietnamese claimed that Maddox was hit by one torpedo, and one of the American aircraft had been shot down. This account from the Pentagon Papers, however, has come into sharp dispute with an internal NSA historical study, which stated on page 17. At 1500G, Captain Herrick ordered Ogier's gun crews to open fire if the boats approached within 10,000 yards. At about 1505G, the Maddox fired three rounds to warn off the communist boats. This initial action was never reported by the Johnson administration, which insisted that the Vietnamese boats fired first. Maddox, when confronted, was approaching Hon Mi Island, 3 to 4 nautical miles inside the 12 nautical miles limit claimed by North Vietnam. This territorial limit was unrecognized by the United States. After the skirmish, President Johnson ordered Maddox and Turner Joy to stage daylight runs into North Vietnamese waters, testing the 12 nautical miles limit in North Vietnamese resolve. These runs into North Vietnamese territorial waters coincided with South Vietnamese coastal raids and were interpreted as coordinated operations by the North which officially acknowledged the engagements of August 2, 1964. Others, such as Admiral Sharp, maintained that U.S. actions did not provoke the August 2 incident. He claimed that North Vietnamese radar had tracked Maddox along the coast, and was thus aware that the destroyer had not actually attacked North Vietnam and that Hanoi had ordered its craft to engage Maddox anyway. North Vietnamese General, Phung the Thai, later claimed that Maddox had been tracked since July 31 and that she had attacked fishing boats on 2 August forcing the North Vietnamese Navy to fight back. Sharp also noted that orders given to Maddox to stay eight nautical miles off the North Vietnamese coast put the ship in international waters, as North Vietnam claimed only a five nautical miles limit as its territory. In addition, many nations had previously carried out similar missions all over the world, and the destroyer Us John R. Craig had earlier conducted an intelligence gathering mission in similar circumstances without incident. However, Sharp's claims include some factually incorrect statements. The North Vietnam never claimed a five-mile limit for its territorial waters. Instead it adhered to a 20-kilometer limit claimed by French Indochina in 1936. Moreover it officially claimed a 12 nanometers limit, which is practically identical to the old 20 kilometers French claim of after the incidents of August. In September 1964, the North Vietnamese stance is that they always considered a 12 mile limit. Consistently with the positions regarding the law of the sea of both the Soviet Union and China, their main allies. Second attack on August 4, another ADESOTO patrol off the North Vietnamese coast was launched by Maddox and the Turner Joy, in order to show the flag after the first incident. This time their orders indicated that the ships were to close to no less than 11 miles from the coast of North Vietnam. During an evening and early morning of rough weather and heavy seas, the destroyers received radar, sonar, and radio signals that they believed signaled another attack by the North Vietnamese Navy. For some four hours the ships fired on radar targets and maneuvered vigorously amid electronic and visual reports of enemies. Despite the Navy's claim that two attacking torpedo boats had been sunk, there was no wreckage, bodies of dead North Vietnamese sailors, or other physical evidence present at the scene of the alleged engagement. At 1.27, Washington time, Herrick sent a cable in which he acknowledged that the second attack may not have happened and that there may actually have been no Vietnamese craft in the area. Review of action makes many reported contacts and torpedoes fired appear doubtful. Freak weather effects on radar and over-eager sonarmen may have accounted for many reports.
No actual visual sightings by Maddox suggest complete evaluation before any further action taken. One hour later, Herrick sent another cable, stating, Entire action leaves many doubts except for apparent ambush at beginning. Suggest thorough reconnaissance in daylight by aircraft in response to requests for confirmation. At around 1600 Washington time, Herrick cabled. Details of action present a confusing picture although certain that the original ambush was bona fide. At 1800 Washington time, Herrick cabled yet again, this time stating, The first boat to close the Maddox probably launched a torpedo at the Maddox which was heard but not seen. All subsequent Maddox torpedo reports are doubtful in that it is suspected that Sonarman was hearing the ship's own propeller beat. Sick. Within 30 minutes of the 4th of August incident, President Johnson had decided on retaliatory attacks. That same day he used the hotline to Moscow and assured the Soviets he had no intent in opening a broader war in Vietnam. Early on August 5, Johnson publicly ordered retaliatory measures stating, the determination of all Americans to carry out our full commitment to the people and to the government of South Vietnam will be redoubled by this outrage. One hour and 40 minutes after his speech, U.S. aircraft reached North Vietnamese targets. On August 5, at 10.40, these planes flying from U.S. aircraft carriers bombed four torpedo boat bases and an oil storage facility in Vinh. The United States' response President Johnson's speech to the American people shortly before midnight on August 4. President Johnson interrupted national television to make an announcement in which he described an attack by North Vietnamese vessels on two U.S. Navy warships. Maddox and Turner Doyen requested authority to undertake a military response. Johnson's speech repeated the theme that dramatized Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh as the aggressor and which put the U.S. into a more acceptable defensive posture. Johnson also referred to the attacks as having taken place on the high seas, suggesting that they had occurred in international waters. He emphasized commitment to both the American people and the South Vietnamese government. He also reminded Americans that there was no desire for war. A close scrutiny of Johnson's public statements reveals no mention of preparations for overt warfare and no indication of the nature and extent of covert land and air measures that already were operational. Johnson's statements were short to minimize the U.S. role in the conflict. A clear inconsistency existed between Johnson's actions and his public discourse. Reaction from Congress while President Johnson's final resolution was being drafted. Senator Wayne Morse attempted to hold a fundraiser to raise awareness about possible faulty records of the incident involving Maddox. Morse supposedly received a call from an informant who has remained anonymous urging Morse to investigate official logbooks of Maddox. These logs were not available before President Johnson's resolution was presented to Congress. After urging Congress that they should be wary of President Johnson's coming attempt to convince Congress of his resolution, Morse failed to gain enough cooperation and support from his colleagues to mount any sort of movement to stop it. Immediately after the resolution was read and presented to Congress, Morse began to fight it. He contended in speeches to Congress that the actions taken by the United States were actions outside the Constitution and were acts of war rather than acts of defense. Morse's efforts were not immediately met with support, largely because he revealed no sources and was working with very limited information. It was not until after the United States became more involved in the war that his claim began to gain support throughout the United States. Government. Morse was defeated when he ran for re-election in 1968.